Hello, in this video I will show you how to use LV or live charts in WPF. Now it's a charting library. I've done a few videos about charts in Blazor. Do take a look at those if you need uh, charts for Blazor just to get to know that. Uh, and this one is for WPF, okay? For WPF, it is useful to know at, le at least one of these uh, you should have in mind, just in case you need, uh, just in case you have an urgent need. And this one I found for you. This is actually a free one, okay? You will find quite a few that are not free, okay? They have uh, maybe some free arrangement, but in general, they are not free. Now then, let's take a look at this one. This is called lvcharts.net. You can find the link in the description. You can also find the links to my WPF course and to my WPF book. So you install it and you use it. Now let's go to the Visual Studio and let's take a look at how you use it. Okay, first of all, how you install it. It's quite important. So you go right click, okay, and you go to NuGet Packages. You go to NuGet Packages, and in the NuGet Packages, we will take a look at the installed ones. And here you see we have um, Live Charts and LiveCharts.wpf. You need these two in order for it to work. Uh, now, the version here is uh, 0.9.7, and the year they published, as you can see, is 2017. But it is free, it looks decent, and it still works perfectly. So why not use it? And it is one of the more popular ones from what I've seen. There are other ones out there, but uh, uh, this one is quite popular. And I know for a fact, and as you will soon see for a fact, that it does in fact work. Okay, so let's launch the application. I'm just going to show you quickly uh, what it looks like. Okay, what it looks like when launched. Now, as you can see, if I hover on one of the values, it says, Val 1, blue, 5, Val 2, red, is 2. And we, we go to the series, the titles and whatnot. And then we have the axis, Y and X. Okay, nothing too fancy. And as you can see, values 2 uh, and X and values 3, right? And then we have different colors as well, if you need that. Um, so nothing too fancy here. Let's take a look at the code. First of all, we need to include something in the XAML. And unfortunately, the preview in the XAML, I couldn't get to work. Perhaps it's a version difference. Uh, uh, it is a bit tricky, but it really doesn't matter, okay? This is one of the better ones, unfortunately. That's the way it is. Obviously, you have the paid ones. If you're willing to pay money for it, uh, then yeah, you will get something perhaps a bit more up-to-date, a bit more decent, a bit more uh, perfect. But this is good enough, in my opinion. Right, so let's see what we need to include. We have, right here, we have a inclusion right here, LVC. We reference as LVC, live charts, right? That's what it stands for. Uh, this is what you'll find in the uh, start tutorial as well, or rather in the examples. You won't find it in the documentation, sort of starting point. Uh, uh, but this is what we have. We have live charts, reference, so just Copy this. Now you can access this uh, source code in my Patreon as well as any other source code that you see in my tutorials on YouTube. Or you can just go to the link provided and you can uh, go to the doc documentation and copy the stuff from there. Okay, you need this and then you need this uh, D design width, design height, and data context as well. Okay, now data context, you'll need to change your default to your window name basically. Okay, and onto the chart. Okay, so the chart is wrapped in these uh, in this uh, Cartesian chart. Okay, and then we have series. Okay, series collection. This is a binding. Okay, this is a binding. So we're not dealing with name references. Uh, this is more of a sort of MVVM like ish arrangement. Okay, and then we have legend location left. Okay, you can change that to, to top or right or whatever you want. But the important part here is the series, which is series collection. It's named that and you'll see, I try to keep this, uh, these names in, uh, in this example similar to what you will see in the documentation. Uh, there are some tricky bits, 
there are some issues, uh, things that might fail, especially if you want to update it dynamically. My suggestion would be once you set everything, you just leave it. Now, it's supposed to be live, but it doesn't really work that well. It is a bit tricky, but let's see now. We have series collection, and then we have axis X and axis Y. Everything is quite clear, right? On the axis, on the axis uh, X, we have labels, okay, labels for the bars, as it is a bar chart, right? Uh, we have, this is a string, and you will see that later. And then we have this formatter thing, okay? Now, uh, this basically provides the numbers uh, on, uh, on the Y, okay? On, on the vertical, you might also call it a this provides the number, this format, okay? So this is something that's default, okay? I did not develop a, uh, develop this format of thing. This is by default, so try not to change that. Try not to attempt to change that because, again, this thing might fail, it's a bit old and uh, it's not perhaps uh, uh, that straightforward. So now onto the series and collections and whatnot. We have series collection. It comes from live charts, okay? It's a type of live charts. It's not a list, it's not a dictionary, it's not something generic. It comes from live charts. Essentially, it's a sort of a list, but it is a bit tricky. And again, updating it dynamically, I would not recommend. It does not seem to work uh, uh, that well. Okay, now we have a series collection. We have string of bar labels, okay, rather array of string bar labels, bar labels, string, uh, strings, and then we have this uh, funk thing, this is by default, okay, this is by default, we do not touch it, and this is by default as well, okay, so first of all, we need to add the series collection, right, you can add it like this, column series, so column series would be one bar uh, per each uh, value, basically, okay? Per each piece, per each pair, that's the column series. And then another one, we again do add new column series, and that's the second one, that's the second bar. We have two bars, one and two, and one and two, and one and two, and one and two. So we have this one, number five, and that matches with number 10. Then number 10 matches with number 15 and so on and so on. They have to match, otherwise it will make no sense, unless of course you need that. And you can add several more. It wouldn't damage anything, it wouldn't hurt anything if you just added several more. If you need another one, copy, paste, and you have another one, just like that. Okay, so this is the title for that particular bar. Okay, for that particular bar. You hover on that bar and the title will appear. Okay, now we have for the bar pairs. Okay, these labels are more for the bar pairs. Uh, I can call it that. Uh, we have these pairs of bars and um, these are the values for it. Bar labels. So that's what we have. Four matching for each one pair. That's what we have. Bar labels and then the formatter again, as I mentioned previously, is by default. The final and the most important thing, this may not seem the most important, right? But it is the most important thing and that is this. Now in my WPF course and in my book as well, uh, when I explain WPF, I really highlight this stuff. You always have to set the data context. If you're doing some kinds of bindings, sort of MVVM style thing, right? You always have to make sure because you will get, uh, you won't really get an error. It will be very tricky to decipher and you might start looking for trouble. And in the end, it will be this error. This will not be set. So do make sure right away. This should come first. You create a window or whatever you have and you set the data context and that's it. You're good to go after that, right? So just to recap, just to recap a bit, we have series collection and then series collection in the XAML gets binded with the actual chart. 
okay, with the actual chart it gets binded. And then we have bar labels binded to labels, to property labels in the axis. Unfortunately, if you add a name, you won't really be able to access labels. Okay, and then we have label formatter, which we do not touch. We don't want uh, to do anything bad with it. Uh, so if you're interested in the Blazor charts, uh, which I believe are a bit better, a bit up to date, it's actually a JavaScript library, uh, chart.js I have a few videos on, and I also have on d3.js, uh, uh, sort of more complex perhaps uh, charts. Uh, do take a look at those videos, also take a look at my Blazor course, take a look at my WPF course and my WPF book, and also check out my other courses on Confission Solution Learning Platform where you can also submit assignments for my review. I will give you some feedback uh, and it will be a bit more interactive learning experience. Now that said, subscribe to this channel and we will conclude this video.